So welcome to this uh, lectures of uh, our system dynamics and control. So already yesterday we have discussed a uh, little bit. We have started this uh, modeling part power system modeling and we discussed various components of power system and also various components of synchronous generator. And we started the <coughs> modeling of synchronous generator. In fact, how to uh, write the equations, voltage and flux linkage equations of a synchronous generator. So we have considered 2.2 model of the generator, right? So this is your 2.2 uh, model, right? So here we have considered in this model, we have considered in the D axis FD and 1D, that is filled uh, winding and one damper winding. And D axis. And in Q axis, we have considered two damper winding, 1Q and 2Q. Okay. This is Q axis. Okay. <clears throat> so now we'll see a uh, little forward. So here uh, we have marked the axis, MMF axis of A uh, phase, B phase, and C phase. And also we have marked this D axis and Q axis with respect to the rotor. Okay. And we found we have also drawn the equivalent circuit and the terminal voltages, currents in the field winding, all the damper windings. Uh, we have seen the current is inward, it is going inside the circuit. And in the starter winding where it is connected to the load, so therefore the current is coming out of the starter winding. Okay. This is what we have studied and also we wrote the voltage equations VABVVC and then VFD, V1D, V1Q, V2Q and then flux linkage equations we have written a flux linkage equation of phase A, phase V and phase C and in the matrix form we have represented this and of course it will be uh, lambda ABC equal to minus LSS I ABC plus LSR I rotor. So LSS represents a matrix of uh, inductances with respect corresponding to the starter. Starter with respect to the starter and LSR is the inductance matrix which is with respect to the rotor. That means inductance of the starter with respect to the rotor. And similarly, we wrote the flux linkage equations and in the matrix form, we wrote it lambda rotor is equal to minus of LRS IABC plus LRR I rotor. So LRS represents the matrix, inductance matrix of the rotor with respect to starter. And LRR is self inductance we can say rotor rotor inductance matrix with respect to rotor itself <laughs> so these are the equations we have seen yesterday and now of course this is your uh, machine and this is your equivalent circuit you have shown it and based on this we'll find now we'll found we'll now try to derive the flux linkage equations. <coughs> so, <coughs> let us say if A is the MMF <coughs> of corresponding to phase A, and I can write it as NAIA, and it is corresponding to the winding AA dash, where NA is the number of turns of phase A winding, right? And that I can split into two components, that is D axis and Q axis component. Okay. 
and if ad will be equal to if i'll write the d-axis component of f a so i can write it as f a cos of theta s because your d-axis is it is away from the uh, from the page a mmf axis by theta s so we can see theta m is the mechanical angle because it is two pole machine so therefore theta s will be equal to theta m because it is p by 2 theta m so here p is equal to 2 because we have two pole we have considered here two pole machine so it will be equal to theta m right so therefore theta s is equal to theta m i can write instead of theta m i can write theta s okay similarly your <coughs> f a q that is q axis component i can write it as f a cos of theta s plus 90 degree which is nothing but is equal to minus f a sin of theta s okay now <coughs> these two mmf one is f a d and other one is f a q they complete their path through two air gaps and hence two fermions is existing one is a p d and p q they are the fermions across along the d and q axis so along the d axis we'll consider p d and along the q axis it is p q so we know the flux along d axis will be f a d p d right and the flux along q axis will be f a q p q because you know fermions into mmf will give us flux right so this flux is along the mmf axis of a dash is given here if i'll write the flux through the a page a winding right so i can write it as f a d p d that is in the d axis right f a d p d into cos of theta s and along q axis <coughs> f a q is along q axis so i can write it as minus of f a q p q sin theta s because this is nothing but i'm just writing f a d p d cos of theta s plus f a q p q cos of theta s plus 90 degree right so this will become minus of f a q p q sin of theta s okay so then i can write f a p d cos square theta s because we can write f a d as f a cos theta s i can substitute here instead of f a d i can substitute f a cos theta s and similarly instead of f a q i can substitute minus f a sin theta s so it will become f a p d cos square theta s plus f a p q sin square theta s now little bit manipulation if i'll do instead of cos square theta s i can write it one plus cos two theta s by two similarly sin square theta s i can write one minus cos two theta s by two okay so then with little manipulation f a i can substitute n a i a and now with certain manipulation manipulation i can write this equation as naia pd plus pq by 2 plus pd minus pq by 2 cos 2, 2 theta s so cos 2 theta s if i'll take common outside it will be pd minus pq by 2 okay so now your equation has two component one is naia pd plus pq by 2 another component is naia pd minus pq by 2 cos 2, 2 theta s one is a fixed component other one is a varying component right if the flux linkage of phase a due to current a is represented as lambda a a then i can write lambda a a as i can write l a a equal to lambda a a by i a so lambda a is nothing but I can write it as n a phi a because we have n number of coils, n number of turns. So I can write n 
a n a number of turns in the phase a so i can write n a phi a a by i a so this will give me the inductance l a a so then just <coughs> multiplying <coughs> substituting phi a a <laughs> Phi A we did, we got it here, and I A will be <coughs> cancelled out. Then it will become N A square P D minus P Q by two plus N A square P D minus P Q by two cos two theta s. So one component is fixed component, other component is varying component with respect to theta s. Okay. So now I can write <coughs> LAA will be equal to LAAO plus LAP cos of 2 theta s. So whereas LAO is NA square PD minus PQ by 2 and LAP is nothing but NA square PD minus PQ by 2. Okay, so these are the both components. So now we can derive an expression for the mutual inductance between a phase a and phase b the mmf of phase b can be split into two components along d axis and q axis the mmf along this axis can be multiplied with fermions along d axis and q axis then effective flux linkage along a dash mmf axis can be found right similarly we can go ahead with respect to phase B. So therefore I can write flux linkage <coughs> in phase A with respect to phase B. So phi B A I can write F B D P D cos of theta s plus minus F B Q P Q sin theta s. So then substituting all these values I can find this will be the equation right. Now <coughs> If we'll find the flux linkage in equation in phase A, so that that will give me N A phi B A. So N A N B I B into this, the, the previous equation exists. And then if the number of turns of A and B phase are same, then let us say N A equal to N B, then I can write the equation as this. LAB will be equal to minus of half LAO plus LAP cos of 2 theta s minus 120 degree because here it is PD by PQ by 4 it is coming so therefore it will be minus half LAO okay <coughs> so NA equal to NB equal to N I can write so then it will become equal so now your LAB will become minus half LAO plus LAP cos of 2 theta s minus 120. Okay. Similarly, I can derive the expression for LAC, which will be equal to minus half LAO plus LAP cos of 2 theta s plus 120. And similarly, I can also derive LBC, which will be minus half. LAO plus LAP cos of 2 theta is minus 180. Right? Except the self inductance, others having the minus half term, we can see here, right? This is minus half. So now your <coughs> stator inductance matrix will become like this. So this is your LAA, LAB, and LAC. This is your L. BA that is equal to LAB and this is your LBB, this is your LBC, this is your LCA that is equal to LAC and this is your LCB that is equal to LBC and this is your LCC. Okay. <coughs> so now we got the whole expression for the stator inductance, which is LSS, right? Similarly, we can proceed to find out the expression for, uh, this is your LSS, right? Just little manipulation if we'll do here, we can get this expression for LSS, okay? Which certain little bit manipulating 
with the angles, we can find this expression. And next we can find LSR, that is the inductance of the starter with respect to the rotor. Right? So the similar fashion, if we move, we can easily find it out. And that will be LAD cos of theta s, LA1D cos of theta s, because the angle between this D axis coil, uh, FD or A1D, with respect to A axis is theta s only, right? So I can simply write LAD cos theta s, LA1D cos theta s minus LA1Q sin theta s, because it is nothing but I can write LA1Q cos of theta s plus 90 degree. So it will become ultimately minus of LA1Q sine of theta s. Okay. Similarly, your with respect to 2Q, it will be minus LA2Q sine theta s, right? And now, with respect to phase B, of course, it is theta s minus 120, right? <clears throat> so, similarly, I can write L B F D cos of theta s minus 120, L B 1 D cos of theta s minus 120, and minus L B 1 Q sine of theta s minus 120. Like that, I can write all these expressions for L S R, right? So now, I can so from this, just little bit uh, with certain assumption, I can write LAFD is equal to LBFD is equal to LCFD that is equal to LSFD because we can see that the, this <coughs> uh, LAFD will be equal to LBFD, LCFD, LSCFD because of the constant permeance across from A to D and uh, B to D, C to D, right? So therefore I can write, these are the constant values. So I can write, it is equal to LSFD. So that is nothing but equal to NS into NFD into PD. NS is your number of turns in the starter winding and N NFD is the number of turns in the field winding here and PD is the formians, okay. Similarly, your NA equal to NB equal to NC equal to NS. So similarly, LA1D equal to LB1D equal to LC1D equal to LS1D. I can represent it as LS1D. So that LS1D means starter inductance with respect to 1D, okay. That will be equal to NS, N1D, PD. PD is the permeance in the across D-axis. Similarly, I can write LA1Q, LB1Q, LC1Q, where the three are equal to, I can take it as LS1Q, NS, N1Q, PQ. PQ is the permeance across the Q-axis and LA2Q, LB2Q and LC2Q and that I can write it as LS2Q and that will be equal to ns n2q pq now substituting these values lsfd ls1d ls1q and ls2q in lsr equation so i can just write it as it is equal to lsfd cos theta s ls1d cos theta s minus ls1q sin theta s minus ls2q sin theta s similarly other elements I can write. Okay, so it is very easy to understand and grasp. Next, I can write the equation of for rotor. For rotor inductance, that is LRS. LRS means from rotor to starter. This is also easily I can write. So LRS from rotor to starter, we have the angle is given theta s, which is varying, of course. So I can write it as LFDA cos of theta s, LFDB cos of theta s minus 120, LFDC cos of theta s minus 240. Similarly, L1DA cos theta s, 
because 1D is lying in the D axis, so therefore it will be having theta s, theta s minus 120, theta s minus 240. Similarly, because 1Q and 2Q, they are lying in the Q axis here, so therefore it will become minus L1QA sine theta s minus L1QB sine theta s minus 120 and it's L1QC sine theta s minus 240. Similarly, I can write for LT2Q equation, right? So now if I'll <clears throat> consider LFD equal to LFD equal to LFD is equal to LSFD. Now substituting this LSFD, I'll write this equation, right? LSFD. And again, L1DA and 1DB plus 1DC and that I can write it as LS1D. So then I can substitute here in this row. I can find this equation, right? Similarly, for L1QA, L1QB, L1QC, I can substitute LS1Q. And that will give me, if I'll substitute, I can find it this row, third row. Then again, substituting this, I'll find the fourth row. Okay. So now your inductance with respect to <coughs> with respect to uh, inductance of the rotor with respect to starter we found this expression right then i can find lrr that is inductance of the rotor with respect to the rotor coils right so of course with a self inductance of the field i can find L F D F D right because there is no varying component varying permeance so therefore it is directly we can write L F D F D and then with respect to 1D I can write L F D 1D right because uh, L F D 1D they are in the same axis D axis right there is no angular difference similarly if I'll find L F D 1 Q then obviously it will be zero because they are 90 degree apart, so it will be zero, right? Similarly, the expression for if we we'll write LFT 2Q, this is also 90 degree apart, so therefore it will also become zero. Okay, so these two components will become zero again with respect to 1D. If we we'll find only d axis component will exist and q axis component will become zero similarly for 1q d axis components will become zero and q axis components will exist right only q axis components will exist and similarly here that for 2q with respect to 2q the d axis components will be zero and q axis components will exist right and what are the values of LFD, FD? LFD, FD will become NFD square PD, right? In terms of permeance and number of turns, right? NFD. So now LFD 1D will become NFD 1ND, N1D into PD. Similarly, that will be equal to L1D FD. And L1D 1D will become N1D square PD. All these values, of course, you know very well, so no need to explain, right? So this is all about your, the expressions for inductances we found in through the flux linkage equations, right? Now, with this equation, we, <coughs> we understood that the factor is associated with time-varying component because the starter quantities, if you'll see, voltage and current, they are actually time varying components, right? They're varying with respect to time. So the synchronous machine dynamics depends upon the rotor angle with respect to AA MMF axis, which varies with, with time, right? So now in order to make this quantity time invariant will actually uh, ref will actually refer to the synchronous frame of reference okay so due to this time varying nature of the parameters of the synchronous machine it becomes very difficult
to analyze the system. So therefore, RH Park has proposed a method to transform time varying AC quantities into time invariant quantities. OK. Therefore, <coughs> this is the general transformation. We can say park transformation. The general equation for park transformation, T D Q O. You can write K1 cos theta s cos of theta s minus 120 cos of theta s plus 120 minus sine theta s minus type theta s minus 120 minus sine theta s plus 120 K2 K2 K2. And these constants, in fact, <coughs> we take different values based on our requirement. K1 and K2 we can choose based on our requirement. So the choice of K1 and K2 is arbitrary. In standard practice, however, a value of K1 is equal to 2 by 3 and K2 equal to 1 by 2 is preferred many times in order to keep the magnitude of the DQ component constant. Same, right? So if not, some alternative choice also used like K1 equal to 2 by 3 square root and K2 equal to 1 by root 2. It is chosen when the time when the power invariant power invariant approach is followed. That means the power in the three phase uh, system remains same in case of as in case of DQ come DQ transformation. OK. So therefore, sometime it is chosen. If we'll choose K1 equal to 2 by 3 and K2 equal to 1 by 2. Let us see what happens to a current, three phase current. So let us consider a three phase current, time varying three phase current. So IA equal to IM cos of omega ST, IV equal to IM cos omega ST plus minus 120, IC equal to IM cos of omega ST plus 120. Now, your ID, IQ, IO will become after transformation matrix, after multiplication of the TDQO, I'll find IM cos of omega ST minus theta S, IM sine of omega ST minus theta S, and I, IO will become zero. But theta S is the rotor angle with respect to the stationary A as MMF axis. In the in electrical gradient, instead of taking theta s with respect to a stationary reference, if we take a synchronously rotating reference, we can express theta s as delta plus omega st. Already I told you, if I'll take a synchronously rotating reference, I can write theta s as delta plus omega st. If I'll substitute this theta s here in this equation, then I'll find ID IQ IO, it will become IM cos delta minus IM sin delta. That means it will become time invariant, right? Time invariant quantity. Okay. So now it became time invariant quantity and that will lead us, IM will be equal to ID square plus IQ square square root. Right? We can see here, the component ID and IQ have a same uh, magnitude, right? IM. OK. And IO also, of course, it becomes zero. This is another advantage. OK. OK, so we'll see next class how we'll uh, after transformation, how the equations will look like all the algebraic equations, stator and rotor algebraic equations, how it will look like. OK. So we'll stop here. So thank you very much.